<laughs> you ready? I think we're good. Okay. Um, can you talk about how the Miccosukee are known as the unconquered and how the Everglades provided shelter and sustenance from hostile invaders? You know, our tribe, along with the Seminole tribe, are the only ones that have never signed a treaty with the United States of America. And back when you had the, the last Seminole Wars, you know, our people, because they knew this terrain, they were able to hide in the Everglades and they knew that the horses couldn't come this far south because they would get stuck in the muck. And back in that time, there were areas that were basically the mud, you had, were like quick, similar to quicksand. And and the mosquitoes and just a very harsh terrain and i believe up towards you have around Payne's prairie and those areas and sometimes where when i travel with my family up the florida turnpike we pass that area and we say hey this is where the soldiers couldn't go anymore they stopped and that you know i was taught that at that moment when the cavalry was looking in over the to that water body and over into the everglades this, this, our, our people were actually submerged in the water and there's a reed that you can use kind of like a snorkel and they were under the water breathing through that tube but because they were so hidden in the brush in the water that the soldiers couldn't see them but they could hear the horses and the soldiers talking and also it's sad because at that time you had women children elderly everyone was hiding in the water and they and mothers had no choice to, for the survival of the whole people is to submerge their babies under the water. Some lived and some didn't. But I was told that at that time, you know, the Calvary decided, you know what, you know, we're, we're, we're not gonna pursue them anymore. And then the, 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 our people came to the agreement that, you know, you men, you take care of your own people, we'll take care of our own people. And there is, they call it the Buckskin Declaration that was written of how uh, that memorializes that agreement that areas you know from Gainesville down to South Florida was supposed to be Indian ter all Indian territory and the United States government were supposed to keep their people their settlers north of that line and never come mm -hmm. further down of course did that happen no over time people um, came down to the area and our people would tell Washington DC you know he would send a message through Curry and we need and when they had the forts here here in Florida is that you know these people are coming into their lands or we don't have enough people to patrol so over time those other civilizations started encroaching here and you know our seasonal home became our permanent home and then throughout time when more people were coming to settle our people had to again reach out to the united states government and Try to preserve our way of life because we we exist off the land it's very important to us and you know if the land suffers we suffer we feel you know just like the land feels our pain we feel her pain and it's it's a very hard conversations to have to get people to understand our connection with the environment because you know most people can pick up their home and move to another city move to another state find another um, church denomination to attend a Mikasuki is here in the Everglades and in our time of need she helped hit us there was a lot of food in the Everglades you had a lot of deer you had a lot of birds you had a lot of you know alligator a lot, a lot of fish and also a lot of wild fruits and root vegetables that we could eat out here so she provided us provided us a home here we're on a tree island a hammock we built our, our shelters up on the islands so she provided us you know a refuge and so and we're always taught in our time of need she gave us shelter and she because of her we were able to survive so now that she it's in her time of need it's our turn to help her survive because we understand in order for our, for our people to be who we are connected to this land she needs to exist and also all the animals and plants need to exist because we're taught that we're all related somehow not just to the two-legged animal species but also to the butterfly butterfly to to the snakes to the turtles and even to the earth itself and even to the trees that's why when we take something to eat we always ask for permission and we always explain what we're going to 
do. We just don't take, and we only take what we need. And that way, there's it's always going to be plentiful for the next generations. But now that you see the Everglades being very um, polluted with water coming in from the north, and also water flow, too much water when the when the urban areas don't want their streets flooded, or when you know um, the two different rivers, you know, east and west of Lake Okeechobee gets too much water, and when they're having issues. The solution seems to be, oh, let's send it to the Everglades. Yet, uh, to Florida Bay needs water. There's, let's just send it down there. Yes, Florida Bay does need water, but it doesn't need polluted water. Also, there are times that because of the water quality requirements that have to be met in Everglades National Park, even tribal lands, um, tribal lands water quality uh, requirements get ignored. Everglades National Park has what two part, ten parts per billion. And a lot of times they'll use our portion of the Everglades to, we call it backstacking, store water, to meter it out into Everglades National Park. But when you do that, this island that we uh, stand on and live on can get up to three feet of water over it when they start storing the water here to meter it out to go into Everglades National Park. What is going to live on this island under three feet of water? You know, then you, the raccoons don't have a place to go, the possums don't have a place to go, the bear don't have a place to go, the deer don't have a place to go. Even the alligators need to get out of water once in a while. So it's a very complex system to understand, but for the indigenous people, it's very simple to understand that you have to have that balance in the environment to help protect it. And if you inundate, I understand um, from science, if you inundate a tree island more than 30 days at a time, the island starts to die and you start losing islands. And back in, I believe in the 80s, they were quoting 60% tree island loss in the Everglades. Now we're in two th uh, 2020. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what that number is. And the tree islands are a great part in the health, keeping the ecosystem of the Everglades healthy in that cycle of life. So it's very important of, to us to to help defend, you know, our homeland. Great, great.